Oh no, my face. What's happening here? Good morning. Oh, let's shrink that down. I swear I did this already. It didn't save my settings. What's happening here? All right. Happy Saturday, everybody. Let's see if we can get this this uh, work in here. Oh no. <laughs> what a... Why? Why must you do this? There we go. Get a little behind the scenes action there. All right, it's because I restarted. Ooh, curvy, I know. I restarted the computer without exiting OBS first. And so it didn't save my settings. Can people, it, can people hear me okay? Can you hear me? It looks like it's coming through. Um, let me double check my audio settings. How's the volume on my microphone? Can I get a thumbs up? Anyway, it's, it's Saturday. We've made it to day 10 of the advent of code here. We are going to be um, reading through this. I haven't read it yet. I've seen the name, Cathode Ray Tube. Yesterday's problem was really fun. Um, missed you yesterday, Keith. I did start, I started, so I, I normally, I haven't been scheduling these. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, I have a schedule, but uh, I slept in yesterday. So my partner's on a trip. She is uh, traveling, and so yesterday morning I had some stuff that I did uh, to to make her feel a little a little nicer about about having to travel. She didn't want to travel, so so it's a little bit late this morning. My uh, new webcam arrived I guess last night after I'd gone to sleep and so I wanted to get that set up and ran into some technical difficulties um, but yeah I've been up for about two hours 6 a.m. here in beautiful Arizona um, but here we are getting ready for day what is this day 10 day 10 uh, let's set up a project here. New console uh, solution. People get mad at me for using Visual Studio Code rather than um, Visual Studio for doing C Sharp and .NET development. But it's because it's because I switch between Linux, Mac, and Windows on a regular basis, and uh, VS Code, VS Visual Studio does not. There's not, the, the VS, Visual Studio for Windows is awesome. I wish there was Visual Studio for Mac and Linux that works nicely. People keep telling me I should be using, um, what is it called? There, there's one that's in the writer, writer, yeah. But correct me if I'm wrong, writer has a, a subscription fee or you have to pay for it. Is there a free version of writer? Anyway, I want to, my students use, I have my students use Visual Studio code because they have my students use Visual Studio code because, sorry, I'm slightly distracted here. That way it's the same on all of them. It's, it's pretty much the same on all of them. And so I don't want to have my students have to pay for it. Although I could probably make my school pay for it, but then all of my videos would be dependent on writer. And so I, I sort of go, I also like them learning the command line, little bits of the command line as well. Um, so there, there's that. So an add solution. Okie dokie, here we go. Let's read this problem. Oh, let me bring that chat over so people can see it. Oh, that's why. That's why I had this pulled over to the side. Yeah. I got to get fancy here so that my chat, I can just have like a chat overlay. I don't know. I don't know. 
See, the, the problem with that though becomes, like I said, if I have my students using that, then I have to, my stuff isn't isn't necessarily access, as accessible as it might be otherwise. I don't know, I'm torn. Here we go, day 10, cathode ray tube. You avoid the ropes, plunge into the river and swim to shore. The elves yell something about meeting back up with them up river but the river is too loud to tell exactly what you're saying, what they're saying. They finish crossing the bridge and disappear from view. Situations like this must be why the elves prioritize getting the communication system on your handheld device working. You pull it out of your bag, but the amount of water slowly draining from a big crack on its screen tells you it probably won't be much use immediately. Unless, that is, you can design a replacement for the device video system. Seems to be some kind of cathode ray tube screen and a simple CPU that are both driven by a precise clock circuit. The clock circuit ticks at a constant rate. Each tick is called a cycle. Start by figuring out the signal being sent by the CPU. The CPU has a single register X. Single register computer. Ooh, fancy which starts with the value one. It supports only two instructions, add V, which takes two cycles to complete after, add V takes two cycles to complete. After two cycles, the X register is increased by the value V or decreased. No op takes one cycle to complete. It has no further effect. The CPU uses these instructions in a program, your puzzle input to somehow tell the screen what to draw. Consider the following small program. No op, add x3, add x minus five. Okay. So no ops do nothing but burn a clock cycle. Um, add x, increase, we have a register x, so we add three to that register, but this takes, what, two cycles? Two cycles. Um, after two cycles, so at the end of the second cycle, it increases. Um, this would subtract five. Let's make sure that's right. So no op happens after the first cycle, the no op instruction execution doing nothing. At the start of the second cycle, the add X begins. During the second cycle, X is still one. During the third cycle, X is still one. The add instruction finishes at the end, setting X to four. All right, so it's at the end of the cycle. Um, so at the beginning of Oh, we got some spam. Let's let's see. There's a button. I once knew how to do this. Moderate. How do I? How do I? Oh, I swear I can delete this person. Oh, there you are. Delete this message. Ban. Boom. Took care of him. Probably a bot. All right. Um. Maybe you can learn something by looking at the value of register X. Consider the signal string, the cycle number multiplied by the value of register X during the 20th cycle. So at the, essentially during, not at the end. Um, every 40 cycles after that. Okay, so we gotta get the 20th cycle and then every 40th cycle. So 20, 60, 100, 140. And then what are you going to do with those? During the 20th cycle, register X has the value 21. So the signal is 20 times 21. Um, during 60, so we multiply the value by our current cycle, by the value in that register to get something. Then we're going to sum those up. Okay. All right, so we have two instructions. I probably going to have us do something tricky so i'm gonna i'm gonna engineer it a little bit i'm gonna engineer it a little bit um maybe not maybe not all right so we need to keep track of int reg x starts at one um cycle we start at cycle zero let's go see here at the start of the first cycle 
the no op instruction begins execution during the first cycle x is one after the first cycle um the cycle and multiplied by the value during the 20th cycle all right so i think this would be cycle one um and we will just write a void void um process string input and we'll do a uh inputs well we'll split it we'll split it we're gonna do string array tokens we'll take our input we'll split it up and then we'll do a a match on the first token um and we got two we got no op and this will do process no op and then we'll have another one that is add x we'll call process add x and this will take in um tokens of one then parse that in as an integer otherwise uh throw new exception something terrible has happened i always want to put a semicolon at the end of that all right so let's put in a few methods here so we've got void process no op oh and we have to return something <laughs> Um, we'll have it return. Hang on, we'll make both. We'll, we'll make these be actions. Uh, so this should be um, ignore. We'll make this one void process add x int uh, val, and we'll have it return the action can i do that var uh action what am i doing here switch no type was found all right so this should be a action int there we go all right couldn't couldn't figure it out but i got it i got it i knew what it was let's see here try not to bump my microphone away um we are now processing a no op. Uh, all this does is, well, ooh, ooh, this is interesting. This is interesting. All this does is make the cycle increase by one. Oh, this isn't quite right because I wanted this to be nice, a little bit nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna make this return a bool when it's done. All right, and... Oh... Cause this has to run two, two times. It increases once. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's over-engineer this. We're gonna over-engineer it. We're gonna create, um, well, I need to know when it started. So then it will, cause I want my CPU to tick. It's gonna tick and it's gonna have an instruction, uh, instructions remaining. Okay, we are gonna create. It's real. I'm really making it this way too hard, um, but it's because I want. Uh, I maybe I shouldn't over prepare for the second second one. Um, so this would be now a funk. Bool. Um. Return false. I'm thinking here. 
what I want this to do. So we need to be able to check. All right, all right, I'm gonna do. Okay, so at the end, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say at the end, when this has finished, increases this cycle. No op does nothing. All right, here's what we're gonna make it do. These are just gonna be plain old actions. They're not gonna do anything. This is gonna return a pair. It's gonna say this is gonna take one tick. All right. Um, action uh and and action comma int cycles all right so it's going to take an it's going to return an action that it performs when it's finished in this case no op does nothing and the add action increases when it's done it increases um x by some amount like that and we're gonna say that this takes two two cycles to complete um and the action is gonna just be this add in int dot parse tokens of one okay Oh, come on. Well, now it's saying I need a return. No. We'll have this taken. Nothing. Need it to return something. It wants me to return something. All right, we will. Return, just have it return true. So this becomes um, from int to bool. Oh boy. Am I, I'm being so unclever. Hang on, hang on, I can do this. I want it to just be an action that doesn't return anything. All right, all right, I'm, I'm. This one has to take in an int. This one does nothing. Let's get rid of this cycles thing just so I can work reason through the types here. I want it to be. Yes. Um, what is it called if you just have an uh, an action that only returns something, takes nothing but returns something? C sharp, is it a delegate? Functions delegate. C sharp lambda types. Um, no parameters.
Oh, is it this? There we go. Okay. All right. That took me way too long to, to figure out. Um, just going to return that. And a one. And then this one, two. Come on. A type on the right. I really want to do this. All right, I can't get this to work the way I want. We're gonna create a record. We're gonna create a record type. Record um, operation. And it's gonna have uh, an action, uh, end action, and an int cycles. And this is going to just return an operation O. And we're gonna do new. And we'll just create some, some constants of this. No uh, operation, no op equals new operation. The end action is process no op comma one and operation uh, add x is new operation um, oh this one's gonna have to be different each time okay but here I can do no op comma and then down here it becomes new operation the operation is going to be um, to call process add x, and we'll try it just with a zero to get this to, to be happy too. Okay, okay, this is way too, that took me way too long to, to work through. Right? Not the way I wanted to do it, but is I think actually slightly better. Parsing int.parse tokens at index one. Okay. Um, it's time to add X into real word. That's okay. Uh, void process a single input. Okay. So for each string input in um, file dot read all lines example.txt let's go ahead and get an example here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i guess i should do string rows equals probably you need to use this and that loaded up for me rows um let's go get an example input here this is the example that give us process I guess technically I can leave that there um, oh I'm not even close to done actually new file example.txt need to actually after we get that we need to do o dot um, dot we need to execute uh, we'll have a tick method here void and this is where we'll do our checks tick and it'll return a bool if we're done um so this would do cycles plus plus at the end and that's gonna have our if check if cycle is 20 we're gonna do something so we need a count int uh score Right, our score starts at zero. Yeah, so if cycle is 20, score plus equals, um, not even 20, we have like a series of things. It's gonna be cycle times register X. Is that right? During the 20th cycle, register X is the value 21, so the signal 
incurs in the middle of the add x, so the value of register x is starting value one, plus all of the other add x values up to that point is 21. Or cycle plus 20 mod 40 is zero. All right, so the 20th cycle and then every 40th cycle thereafter. Um, and then we stop. Do we ever stop finding the signal during at the 220th cycle? Okay, so we just stop at 220. Um, which I'll, I'll put somewhere else. So this will return void. Interesting. And then we'll tick. Tick does this, increases the cycle. Um, yeah, yeah, for that operation, we will do int ticks equal, we can actually just say how many times you want to tick. So it's going to tick O dot cycles. And then <laughs> here, here's here's the dumb thing. Um, we'll say if we're gonna do recursion here, if ticks equals zero, return. Um, otherwise, we do this. I'm gonna do tick ticks minus one. All right, and then I don't have to write a loop. <laughs> don't do this. Don't do this if you're in C sharp. Uh, so process here. So for each string in our input, we're gonna call process. Um, process input. It's not quite use of unassigned variable no op. What is this error? Dot net build this is a real error use of unassigned oh i think it's telling me i want to put this here okay um and i need to stop if the cycle Two twenty. I need to stop on cycle two twenty, um, which is annoying. We'll do if tick, then we will return. All right. So this is gonna turn a bool that will just be on the and the 220th for the sum of these signal strings um, if cycle equals 220 return false and down here we just return this um turn true if tick equals zero return true if cycle if cycle is we want to stop at 220 so if we're greater than 220 return false okay I don't like this but let's see how let's see if this does anything first off um, console dot right line score let's 
Check it out here. 720. That is it. Oh, it's. Hmm. Let's have it print out. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Let's have it print out. Console.write line. Cycle. 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 I'm getting notifications. There we go. Cycle. Um, reg X. Okay, so our register X never changes because I never invoke. All right, that's why we do our ticks. And then afterwards, we need to do O dot invoke. Oh, hang on. O dot end action dot invoke. All right, there we go. One three one four zero. Okay. Well, that's not our answer. We got to get our input. All right, let's get our puzzle. Get the puzzle input. That took me longer than I thought it would. And hold on to our butts here. 16880. Hey, hey, gold star. All right. So now. Ooh. It seems like the X register controls the horizontal position of a sprite. Specifically, the sprite is three pixels wide, and the X register sets the horizontal position of the middle of the sprite. In this system, there is no such thing as vertical position. If the sprite's horizontal position puts its pixels where the CRT is currently drawing, then those pixels will be drawn. This is cool because this is exactly how um, like old TVs would draw. There'd be like a little line. So if you record, I remember recording a, a, a TV screen and in the video, you can actually see the like the, the refresh line going through it. Um, that's cool. This is, this is a neat puzzle. You count the pixels on the CRTs 40 wide and six high. It's a small CRT. This, I guess that makes sense though. This CRT screen draws the top row of a pixel left to right, then the row below that, and so on. The leftmost pixel in each row is in position zero, and the rightmost pixel in each row is in position 39. So, be careful. So, by carefully timing the CPU instructions and the CRT drawing operations, you should be able to determine whether the sprite is visible the instant each pixel is drawn. If the sprite is positioned such that one of its three pixels is the pixel currently being drawn. If the sprite is positioned such that one of its three pixels is the pixel currently being drawn, the screen produces a lit pixels, a hash. Otherwise the screen leaves a leaves the pixel dark, a dot. Um, the first few pixels from the larger example above are drawn as follows. Start cycle one, begin executing. CRT draws pixel in position zero. CRT draws pixel in position one. Finishes executing at X register. Register X is now 16, so the sprite position is here. Okay, so zero, position zero is the left part of it. Cycle two draws in position one. Sprite position zero one end of cycle. Dr 
draws it. I don't quite understand why it would draw there in position one. Begin executing. All right, let me read through this again. Okay, let's see here. By carefully timing the instructions, the extractor sets the horizontal position of the middle of the sprite. There is no such thing as vertical positions. The count, count the pixel on the CRT 40 wide and six high. The CRT screen draws the top row of pixels left, right, then the row below that and so on. Yeah, so it iterates through. This is why we wanna go. Oh, so we have to go up to 240. Okay. So let's have, let's change this to end at 240. That's when we stop. Um, like the CPU, the CRT is tied close to the clock. The CRT draws a single pixel during each cycle. Okay, so every cycle it draws something representing each pixel of the screen as a hash. Here are a few cycles, so be careful so by carefully timing the CPU instructions and the CRT drawing option, you should be able to determine whether the sprite is visible. The instant each pixel is drawn, if the sprite is positioned such that one of its three pixels is the pixel currently being drawn, the screen produces a lit hash. Otherwise, the screen leaves the pixel dark. The first few pixels from the larger example above are drawn. Begin executing at X. 15. Okay, so add X15 has it, then CRT draws draws pixel in position zero. CRT draws pixel in position one. Finishes executing add X15. And the register is now in position 16. So that's the center. Zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So that's the center. Begins draw begins executing at X11. CRT draws pixel in position two. CRT finishes draws. CRT draws position in pixel three. Okay, so we're draw. I, I understand. I understand now. So we're all we're just incrementing through. And if you happen to have your your window in that spot, it goes ahead and fills it in. So now it goes to row five. And because that is part of the position four, we we go ahead and do that. Okay, I, I understand. I understand this. Fascinating, fascinating. So we're gonna we're gonna add in like a draw method, which determines whether or not we draw. Register X determines the window from left to right, um, and then we have to make a cool ASCII image, and then it's gonna produce some letters for us. That's neat. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So let us start by. During every cycle, um, this might need to be greater than 239. 239, we stop. Let's try that, 239. Um, or equal to. There we go. It's a little easier for me to think about. All right, so now every cycle, before we increase, we got to draw. Um, and where we draw is based on, um, yeah, so it's going to be based on a certain position. So let's start out here. We're going to do a console dot clear, and then we can, I don't know if cheats the right word, but console has like a set position in it. So we're gonna use the set position to calculate our X and Y values. All right, so int, int row. So which row we're in happens to be every 40 pixels equals cycle 
mod cycle divided by 40. Int column is going to be our um, cycle mod 40. Console.set cursor position. Uh, left. All right, so do left and left and top. So it's going to be column row. And then console. For now, we'll do a console.right dot. Uh, this just makes my brain makes things a little easier for my brain. Let's let's see if we get a nice grid there. Okay. Uh, for some reason, we didn't get that first one. So I don't. I don't understand that. And then where's this other right line? Let's see here. Oh, the cycle starts at one. Is is it supposed? It's supposed to start at zero. Oh, interesting. Um. Interesting. But doesn't isn't the cycle starting at one? Hang on. Oh, oh, it's because the cycle hasn't ended yet. That's right. So it's at the end of the first cycle. Is this gonna break everything? Fascinating. Um, can I do a sub subtract one? Thanks, Keith. I appreciate that. Uh, this is gonna throw everything off, right? Um, what am I, what am I, I gotta let my brain bask in this just a minute, just a moment. Scan, it's just the scan line starts at zero. I know <laughs> the zero pixel. I don't know why this is my brain is, is not, not absorbing this just yet. Um, I think I just need to do this. Yeah. But now I have one pixel missing at the end. I'm gonna have like a weird off by one thing that my brain, oh, um, now, this is where if I'm greater than 240. Okay. There we go. So so the greater than 240 was right. Okay. All right. All right. The world makes sense to me now. I think. I think. Um, we'll add a little new line here. So we output our score there as well. Okay. Okay. Let's switch back to the example. Sometimes my, your brains just don't work the way we want. Okay, and then we just have to determine where our column is. So we draw a pixel every time. Um, and let's read here one more time. Determines which row, all right. So the register X determines which row we're in. So we're going to have a, a little thing in int. Um, let's have a range. We're going to have a thing that says if um, is in 
window. We're gonna have an is in window console dot right line. Uh, sorry, console dot right. Little hash. Else, we do that and is in window void or bool is in window. Turn false to start, and we're in a window, so our register X, and we'll pass in a column. And call, um, and we're just gonna say our window happens to be, so our reg X uh, is the start, so we're gonna say return column greater than equal to reg x minus one and column less than or equal to reg x plus one. There we go. All right, let's try it for our input. These are so cool. These like make me want to write. God, that's hard to read. All right, we're not writing a dot. What kind of fool are we? <laughs> I couldn't even read it. R K A Z A J B R. R K A Z. R K A Z. Oops. A J B R. These are so cool. Some of these are so cool. Like they inspire me. I want to make whole projects for my students based off of these. This one, I, I want to make a project based off of this for my students. I think my students, this is just such a, such a cool project where it's like, okay, well we have this, this crazy input that creates ASCII art. And then like upping the ante would take a program that, uh, um, what, what am I trying to say? Uh, my brain's not working. A pro All right. So can you do the inverse where you take in some text, right? Read in some text and then produce, produce the code, the, the instructions to do it. Right. I think that would be really cool. All right, so let's, uh, here, here's what I wanna do. We're gonna add in every cycle, we're gonna add in a small thread.sleep. Thread.sleep. Get ourselves a nice little, it's like a dot matrix printer. <laughs> That looked far better than I was expecting it to do, uh, to look. <laughs> what a neat little problem. Um, we got two stars here. I really like the, that looks fascinating. That looks absolutely cool. Absolutely cool. Keith, let's check it out. Oh, let me commit this git. Uh, don't want to commit my gits. What I need to do is in my git uh, code dot, dot, slash dot git. Ignore, do I not have one of these? I do. Input.txt files. That's what I need to do. Um, we'll do this. There it goes. All right, git add. Git, let's make sure, commit. Uh, feet implement day 10 all right Keith let's let's have a look here I always love your solutions nice and short nice and short um loop through start X at one list loop through Nice and simple, nice and simple here. I love this. Get our pixel. So part of me just wanted to 
So I'm, I'm gonna be reworking this into a guide video. So I wanted to break it down into each of the components. Your solution is beautiful. So concise, so simple. Um, nice. Constant right lit. We get our pixel there. If it's one of these, I like that. We add it. Snapshots is a list of our, our snapshots. I like it. Um, and try parse tokens. I. Oh, this is cute. This is cute here. You're saying if I can parse it, do it. If I can't parse it, then just don't do that. Um, I plus plus what is what are we doing yeah this is cute this is cute I like it I like it clever solution little trick there um great job today's puzzle is cool I was you know Saturday it's a weekend. I was kind of expecting a, a bit of a brain buster today. Um, but these have been so nice, relaxing. These have been like really relaxing little puzzles. Yeah, it would have been, have to start out. Yeah, so sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Mine is kind of crazy. Like, did I really need to write a function that does nothing called no op? No. Did I really need to write a function called process addx that increments register? No. Do I really need this bool here for is window? Mine is just, I wouldn't even say it's engineered well. Um, it's over-engineered, poorly over-engineered. <laughs> um, but it's a cool little intro. So one of the things I like about this is you can, in, in, in my class, it'll be nice to introduce the idea of how do we model a little CPU. What is the register? What is what what is a no op? So a lot of them haven't heard of no ops before. So it'll be really really cool to in, introduce some of these concepts very lightly in a little puzzle. This was fun. You can barely solve it quickly compared to others. So I have this huge advantage of, of having implemented compilers uh, and worked in assembly quite a bit. So I do have an advantage here of knowing, okay, well, this is sort of how CPU clocks work, right? I, I love hardware. I love, let me see, I love playing with hardware. I don't like how hard and finicky hardware can be. In software land, when you're writing code, you have all these guarantees. <laughs> you have a lot of guarantees in, in software land that things are gonna work the way you expect. In hardware land, not so much. Yeah, I love, I really like this. This is a cool problem. Cool, cool. Yeah, I've done, compilers is, is one of my favorite hobbies. Working on compilers, I've worked on, uh, I don't know if you heard of the, the language Elm, um, the Elm compiler was one of my little hobby projects, working on that and working in that language uh, specifically. It's been fun. Cool. All right. Fun little thing. Keith, thanks for hanging out. It's always a pleasure when I get to check out your solution. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what time is on you? And you said this is a little late for you. So I'm hoping you have a chance to go to sleep now. And I'm, I'm hoping um, our friend, our other friends are sleeping. Oh, you're, you're, and I'm assuming you've been up all day, 3 a.m., go, go to sleep. Don't let me keep you awake. 3 a.m., wow. Wow. All right. But yeah, I'm gonna hop off here now that I got this solved. There's not a whole lot going on. There's not a whole lot of people watching. So I don't want 
to be distracted. I need to work on some projects for my students for next semester. I have several weeks to get there. I have five weeks, but I got to build a, a whole course in five weeks. And every time I try and do it on stream, I'm not able to get anything done. So I'm going to hop off here. 7 a.m. for me. I'm going to eat some breakfast, have another cup of coffee. But have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for hanging out. It's been fun. And of course, you're welcome back anytime. I hope I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.